Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to talk about is the acromioclavicular joint, more specifically the AC joint. So basically for those who are unaware, the AC joint is a really simple joint that's very important for shoulder function and it's formed by the collarbone or the clavicle as it inserts into the top of the scapula. And in order to find your AC joint, and if you've got an injured AC joint, this will be a tender spot for you. If you can come to the tip of your shoulder, you'll find that there's a, I guess, a difference between the soft, fleshy part of the top of your shoulder, and then there'll be a bony, hard part just on the top of the shoulder. Now, if you keep coming up past the start of that bony shelf and a little bit forward, you'll find the connection between the collarbone and the tip of the shoulder. Similarly, if you just follow the collarbone from wherever you want to start towards the tip of the shoulder, once you get to the tip of the shoulder, if you then move your arm around, and rotation is a good way to see it, uh, you'll feel some subtle movement in that area. Now, if you've got an injury there, the potential would be tender. Further to that, depending on the severity of the injury, so whether you've just strained the ligaments, torn the ligaments, or ruptured the ligaments, clinically, we can sort of categorize those via what's called a step deformity. So as the severity of the injury often increases, which we often find is linked with more instability at that joint, we can see what's called a step deformity where you come from the bony section of the tip of the shoulder and there's a physical sort of step down to the rest of your shoulder as that sort of collarbone lifts up a little bit. So again, it doesn't necessarily matter too much for the purposes of this, ex uh, for this video, sorry, because what we want to touch on today and why I wanted to make a video about this is we want to talk about one hidden feature that often sets people up to injure their AC joint. And it's an interesting conversation because typically we can categorize AC joints into two subcategories. The first one is the most common one, which is a sort of trauma or an accident that leads to an AC joint getting injured. So that can mean landing on your shoulder, you know, falling onto your shoulder on the tip of your shoulder, um, copping a bump from the side. Any trauma which disrupts that tissue acutely, again, is one subgroup. Second subgroup is for people that don't necessarily have an accident. It might be something where you're just doing something every day. You might feel a pop or a click, um, and it's not necessarily trauma based, but there just reaches a point where that AC joint fails or becomes a problem or, or gets injured almost asymptomatically in that sense. Not, not asymptomatically, but um, without some trauma directly setting that up to fail. Now, the important thing about this conversation is we can lump those in together and have a, an even more sophisticated conversation about one hidden feature that sets those tissues up to fail. And again, if you've been watching these videos a lot, you'll understand that even though your dysfunction may be here, your body functions as a whole. So we need to look at the top half of you, including your neck, your upper back, um, your rib cage, all these sections to determine what was the defining feature that allowed this to become a problem. Now, it often seems like an open and shut case when if you fall on your shoulder and your, your AC joint in, uh, becomes injured, it makes perfect sense that you didn't have a problem until you fell. But the really important characteristic with a lot of AC joint injuries is a stiff upper back, stiffness through your uh, the joints of your upper back, the rib cage of your upper back. And we can tie this into both of those subcategories quite easily. Because what we find is, if you can imagine that your rib cage is stiffer, if you are unlucky enough to have some accidental trauma to your shoulder from a fall or from a knock, your rib cage is less able to absorb the forces that go along with the, however severe that trauma is. So if your rib cage is really supple and normal and loose, then it's going to be at its peak capacity to absorb that force and leave you at the lowest risk of having to damage that AC joint because this isn't giving. Now, there's clearly a level of trauma that's going to surpass any tissue, any perfect tissue's ability to cope. Generally, we don't sort of see that unless it's a horrible car accident or something really, really, really nasty. For the most part, the forces that people experience to injure their AC joint can potentially be compromised by a lack of absorption by that or shock absorption by the rib cage and the upper back. So one of the defining features that we see a lot is that clinically people that have a lot of AC joint dysfunction typically have a lot of stiffness in the rib cage and the upper back, so sort of more towards the top of the side that they've hurt themselves on. So and when we want to go through a treatment in a second, which is again a very simple treatment, we want to make sure that we can restore as much normal motion to the joints in the upper back and the rib cage as possible, not only to feed as much slack back into that AC joint, 
But when you're moving that shoulder around, if you have some dysfunction at the joint, you don't want to have all these handbrakes sort of blocking your movement and shunting more force back onto that tissue. So, so again, to make it really clear, if your body runs into stiffness, it goes looking for the next most viable source of movement. And if that rib cage is quite stiff and tight, the AC joint, which is held together by some ligaments, it may have more give, uh, may have more give than the amount of give you have in the rib cage. So the force may be directed through that joint more than it's designed to, which can cause a problem, obviously. So, and again, depending on the severity of that trauma, it can often depend on how sinister the consequences are. Similarly, if you have a shoulder that hasn't had trauma, but has just become a problematic AC joint, and arthritis is a common sort of feature in a lot of AC joints because of this, when we're talking about that same upper back stiffness, again, it compromises the way that you load up that joint. So instead of that joint having full capacity and full function at its disposal to be loaded up normally, if you start pulling slack and tension out of the area, then all of a sudden the way that you load up that AC joint changes. So again, it's similar for a lot of shoulder dysfunction, but AC joints in particular, if you have an, a stiff upper back, if that rib cage is stiff, then it sets the AC joint up to fail because it's, it's a, a way of compensating for that stiffness and your body potentially compensates more through the AC joint because there's a bit more given it than a stiff upper back, for example. So, so it's really important that if you have problems with your AC joint, yes, we can strengthen you. Yes, we can, we can operate on you. We can do these things that hopefully help stabilize the joint and make it feel better. But ultimately, we need to go after that hidden upper back stiffness to restore that normal motion to the joint. So if you're someone who has had problematic AC joints <clears throat> excuse me, for years and you haven't taken the time to clear up a lot of that upper back stiffness, it's really hard to become someone who used to have an AC joint problem because the potential for that original dysfunction, which set that AC joint up to fail in the first place, the potential is that that hangs around and yes, you can get stronger. Yes, you can strengthen it with surgery and things like that by putting plates or whatever you want to put into it. But you haven't ultimately solved the original problem, which you can do quite easily with a wall. So, so what I want to go through today is we want to make sure that if you have some problems with your AC joint, that you find a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or whatever ball has the density that feels comfortable for you to tolerate. And we want to put that into the upper back like I've done a thousand times, <clears throat> excuse me, a thousand times before with these videos. We we'll try and restore as much motion to those tissues as possible. So before we get to the exercise, like we always tend to do here, we want to make sure that you do a movement first that lets you know how your AC joint is going. You want to do the exercise, then come back and do that exact same movement again. So you can you can gauge any change at all that's come from that exercise because we want to make sure that we don't deal in promises. We want to deal in results. So you don't have to take my word for the fact that the upper back is important. If you have an AC joint problem and you free it up, you should feel that there's a subtle increase or a fantastic increase straight away. Otherwise, you haven't done anything. You don't have to guess. You can see it in real time. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we can do is traditionally maybe out to the side may not feel comfortable for someone. Out in front, just get a sense for how that moves. And then what we want to do with the ball, so we can do it in two sections. So if we find the middle of the upper back and let it come off to the side a fraction, so just off from the side, we'll be more on the spinal joints. If we come out in between the spinal joints and the shoulder blade, in the middle there somewhere will be the rib cage. So we want to use the ball in both of those areas. So, <clears throat> so what we want to do, we'll place the ball on the ground. You can do it up against the wall if you want to. And we just want to lie down over the top of the ball Again, having it right next to the spine, we might need to roll a fraction over to, to feel for it. So again, we're not rolling up and down on the ball. We're finding a spot that feels stiff, tight, or tender, and we're going to let the ball press in. We're trying to affect the deeper joint stiffness. These joints are segmental joints. So if you roll over the top of them, you're not really getting that constant pressure through the joints to affect change. So again, we want to find a spot that feels tight here. And if this is comfortable for you, we can make this a lot more effective and a lot more efficient by using shoulder movements and arm movements to shear this tissue free. So again, if you have a really tender AC joint that doesn't enjoy particular movements, just work within a movement that feels comfortable for you. And as it frees up, you'll hopefully feel like that, that shoulder and that arm can move further and further and further. So normal range of motion means you should be able to have your, your back relatively straight 
your elbow straight and still be able to touch the ground. So we're not cheating here by bending your elbow. <coughs> Excuse me. But we want to spend some time here. And once you've spent some time on the spot next to the spine, then I'll get you to move the ball further out towards the shoulder blade onto the rib cage. Again, there tends to be a lot of muscular tightness and tenderness over the top of this. But again, if you just subtly move it up and down, you should find that you can hit a spot that feels stiff, and that's probably the rib specifically. So again, you can do the same thing. Incorporate movement into the equation. Get that shoulder to move. Get that upper back to shear free as much as possible <clears throat> until you feel like things start to move better. And as I said before, make sure that you recheck your shoulder movements and you'll hopefully feel, so for me, that just feels freer than it did before, as it always should. And hopefully you'll find that that'll start to feed some slack into the tip of the shoulder, improve the mechanics of the area. <clears throat> and the little known fact of a lot of upper back stiffness is that that's often the catalyst for chest muscular tightness as well. So if you have tight chest, tight pecs that respond well to massage, but keep getting tight again, if you were to see which uh, ribs that those tissues anchor onto, follow them around to the back, you'll probably find that there'll be some stiffness there more than you expected. So, so I think it's a, a really important piece of the puzzle for those that have AC joint problems to understand that if your upper back is stiff, it can be one of the main features as to why the AC joint becomes a problem in the first place. But it can also give you back a lot of control over your pain and symptoms, again, depending on how sinister the injury was. But by clearing it up, you can restore as much normal motion and loading to that AC joint so they can settle down a lot faster. Now, the, the final piece of this puzzle that we always need to talk about, again, if you've been following these videos, you probably know where we're going, but we need to have a conversation about posture and positioning. So again, as we always wanna say, if, that, if those sections of your upper back that you've found that are stiff, they have to be stiff for a reason. And traditionally what we find is they're stiff because we get into positions where we might be relaxing through that, that upper back and shoulder. The weight of the arm with gravity just consistently pulls and creates this tension in the area. So what your body does as this amazingly sophisticated and adaptive machine is we're getting into positions where those shoulders are rounded and we're hanging off those tissues at the back. The body adapts by stiffening up those tissues and tightening them up to deal with that extra increase in load. So if you're freeing it up and taking your time to reduce that stiffness and tightness, if you're not then putting your shoulders back into a good position again and making sure that you're checking in with those postures day to day. So if you're driving somewhere, you might start in a fantastic, a fantastic position, but then in a half an hour later, you might find that you've defaulted back to that same position again without realizing it. You just got to keep resetting and taking the tension off those areas so that they don't ask to keep stiffening up again. And the other bonus on top of that is if your shoulder's in a poor position, the way that you load up the AC joint's gonna be different. So if you're in a poor position and trying to move your arm around and use your shoulder, it's more likely going to create some pain and tenderness in that area because it's abnormal in terms of what's going on on top of the abnormality of the injury itself. So, so I guess to summarize, uh, you've gotta pay attention to your posture as everyone does, but if you have an injury, it just helps create a, an environment that allows things to settle down as quickly as they can. And you've got to pay attention to the stiffness in your upper back because if that hangs around, again, it can be one of the features that throws your rehabilitation sort of off a normal axis, it can take longer. But if you're someone who wants to avoid an AC joint injury or you've had them in the past and you just want to get as much of a buffer against another one as possible, then taking away that upper back stiffness um, is highly recommended. So. So hopefully that was useful information. Um, as always, let me know below in the comments how your AC joint is going. Let me know how you heard it. Let me know what you've been told to do for it before. Um, I'd be amazed if everyone has sort of worked hard on their upper back. It's just something that's not really well advertised. I don't think it's even really well understood at the moment medically, um, but clinically it's such an important feature. Um, and if you can try the exercise, I'm sure that you'll see that yourself without having to trust me at all. So. So I think, let me know in the comments below how you're going with it. Um, if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like below and consider subscribing. It just helps these videos get out to more people. It helps support the channel. It, it makes it feel more important so that more people can see it and hopefully get exposed to this information. So um, any help would be greatly appreciated. Um, so in the meantime, um, just let me know how you go. And uh, again, we'll just keep pumping through these videos. 
uh, taking requests. So if you have anything that you're dealing with or struggling with and you need help, and you just don't feel like people have given you the right answers yet, let me know in the comments below and I'll put a video up on the topic because there's every chance that if you're experiencing this yourself, there's another 20 or 30 people, you know, tenfold um, that have experienced the same thing and haven't felt comfortable asking that same question. So that will really help everyone else out if you let us know in the comments below as well. But um, until next time, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you then. Bye.